So Ekin PLC then, this is a question that came from the June 2020 paper 2, 7127-2, question 15. So it was in section B, 14 mark calculation question um, with six marks of writing attached to the end of it. So Ekin uses batch production to man manufacture two products, X and Y. They use activity-based costing when calculating the overhead cost to be assigned to each product type. So this is when we have cost pools. So um, areas of the business where we accumulate overheads, things like the quality control department, the machine setup department, um, the machine maintenance department, could be all sorts of different cost pools. Um, and we attach the overheads to units of output using cost drivers. So whatever it is, whatever the activity is, that takes place. So activity-based costing has the advantage over absorption costing in that it does take um, batch sizes into account. So if things are made in smaller batches, they will get proportionately more of the overhead attached to them because it is more time consuming to run products in smaller batches. There are more machine setups. Sometimes there might be more quality control inspections, although we'll talk about that in a second. Um, they've given us the, um, the information. Now, the thing to note here is that it's per week um, and we are preparing um, statements per week as well. So always just check that we've been given the information because if they've given you information per week but they're asking you to do something for a year, you're going to have to multiply it all up by, by 52. And sometimes they do that. They uh, try, and, try and trip you up. So just be aware of that. Not so much of an issue in this question. So product X is produced, um, they produce 4,500 units a week and that's produced in batches of 50 units. Product Y they make 3,600 of those a week and those are made in batches of 75. So we can already see that product Y potentially is going to be a bit more efficient because the um, batch sizes are 50% bigger than the product X. So that should enable us to you know, have fewer machine setups, things like that. So um, material costs and labor costs, we're going to need to include those. Um, product X and product Y, it's already split down, so we don't need to do anything further with that. They've also given us machine hours and labor hours. Now remember, we only need these really if we're doing overhead absorption costing, we're gonna use them to calculate an overhead absorption rate. So if we were doing traditional absorption costing, we would um, you know, find out what the overheads are for product X, the same for product Y. And then we would divide them into units of output on the basis of either machine hours or labor hours, according to whichever is higher, um, whichever it, you know, if it's more machine intensive, which you can see product X is, we would use uh, the machine hours labor hours would be the one for product Y. But we don't need to do that because we're not doing absorption costing in this question. So watch out for that. That is a red herring in this case. Um, it tells us that each batch requires machinery to be reset and the fixed production costs for machinery preparation totaled 44,160. So what we're going to be doing is trying to work out how much of that 44,160 needs to be attributed to product X and how much of it needs to be attributed to product Y. So the first thing to do is find out the number of batches. And we can find that out by if we divide 4,500 by the 50 units per batch, we can see that we have 90 batches of product X. Let's stick product X in on that side. And if we do the same, 3,600 and divide it by 75, we can see that we've got 48 batches of product Y. So the total 90 plus 48 means that we've got 138 batches in total across the organization. So each batch is gonna have an overhead of 320 pounds. So if we're trying to find out how much to um, attach to product X, we're going to say that the X is 320 times the 90 batches there. So 320 times 90 is 28,800. Just squash that in, yeah, just about. And product Y is 48 batches, so 320 times 48 batches means that that is going to get overhead of 15,360 attached to it. Okay, everybody happy so far. Now I'm going to switch the colour of my pen to do the, um, the quality control. So quality control procedures are conducted every 300 units. The fixed cost for quality control procedures totaled 68,310. 
So we can find out how many quality control inspections. So quality control, let me just do that in green to make it stand out. So the total cost for quality control is 68,310. So product X is going to need 4,500 divided by 300 is going to need, so product X is 15 quality control inspections. And product Y, 3,600 divided by 300 is only going to need 12. So it's 27 in total. So of that 68,310, product X is going to get 15 over 27, which is 37,950. And product Y, 12 27 times the uh, 68,310. So we're going to give 30,360 to product Y. Okay. Um, so hopefully that's giving you an idea of how we take you know, batch sizes and stuff into account. It's not actually going to have any impact on the quality control because that's done every 300 units. So it's not done per batch. But if quality control was done on a batch basis, then because Y is in bigger batches, each unit of Y would get proportionately less overhead than, uh, than product X. Okay, so that's those two dealt with. Um, it says that all units produced each week are sold, so that means that there's no inventory, um, and that the selling prices for each product are based on an 80% markup on variable costs. So we need to find the variable costs, and we need to bump those up by 80%. And that will give us our selling price, our sales revenue figure. So what we're being asked to do here is to prepare statements to show the revenue, the contribution, which obviously is your sales revenue minus your variable costs, which are these here, the material costs and the labour costs, um, and then work out the profit or loss per week for each type of product. So to go from contribution to the profit or loss, we're going to take the overheads um, away, so the quality control and the... Um, was the other one quality control and machinery resets so i'm now going to switch over to a, an excel spreadsheet um, so that you don't have to put up with my handwriting any longer and uh, just take you through that part of the question so i've now moved over on to um, an excel spreadsheet just to make it all a little bit neater so as you know we've calculated now how we're going to um, share the overheads for machinery preparation and quality control procedures between X and Y. That's just been done on the Jamboard on the first part of the video. So what we've got to do now is prepare statements to show revenue, contribution and profit or loss per week for each type of product X and Y. So what I've done here is already laid something out. So I've got two columns, uh, one for X, one for Y. Um, the sales revenue, um, as we know, is going to be based on the variable costs. So we've got materials costs here, 33,750, 42,500. Unless we're told otherwise, we're always just going to assume that those are completely variable. They rise directly in line with output. So we're going to gross those up by adding 80% to find the selling price. So the way we're going to do that then is to say, um, we're going to take the 33,750 and the 42,500, add them together and multiply them by 1.8. Okay, so that means that we get sales revenue for product X of 137,250. We can do exactly the same for product Y. So 22,750 for materials, 55,250 for labour, and then times that by 1.8. That's going to give us the revenue figure of 140,400 for product Y. So if we then take away the um, variable, uh, variable costs on the sales revenue, that will give us our contribution. I'm just going to copy the formula across there. So contribution is the sales revenue minus the variable cost is 61,000 for product X, 62,000 for product Y. Then if we go back to the calculations we did on the Jamboard, the machinery preparation, we worked out we needed 28,800 to be um, allocated to product X and or attributed to product X and 15,360 to be attributed to product Y. For the quality control procedures, it was 37,950 for product X, and it was 30,360 for product Y. So we can now work out the profit or loss for each of those by taking the contribution, deducting the overheads. So we can see there that product X is showing a loss of 5,750, product Y, is showing a profit of 16,680. So um, 
the way that we've shared the overheads um, has taken into account batch sizes. And because Product X is made in smaller batches, it has got proportionally more of the um, machinery preparation costs. So, um, you can see there we've got a loss on Product X, a profit on Product Y. So it would beg the question, should we just scrap production of Product X because it's making a loss? But what we need to bear in mind is that these costs, the total of the costs, will not just disappear if we stop making Product X. So if we stop making Product X, we're going to lose that contribution which goes towards all of the overheads. So we actually might find that we're in a worse situation um, as a result of doing that. Um, Part two of this question, um, 14.2, which was worth six marks, asked you to advise the directors of Ekin whether they should change back to absorption costing. So, I mean, we've gone to all the trouble of setting up an activity-based costing system. So it seems a bit silly to then change back to absorption costing, which is a more simplistic way of doing things. Um, what we've identified here is that you know there is a potential loss making product. So actually that's going to enable us to take some action rather than just have a knee jerk reaction and say well, we need to scrap it. What can we do? Can we raise the selling price um, of that product? Um, can we review the way these overheads are um, attributed to the, the units of output? Um, the business is still profitable overall. So this is a week, remember, this is not a year or anything. So we've got, you know, still 11,000 ish of, of profit being made per week. So it's not a complete disaster, but we could identify perhaps, you know, this is maybe flagged up the fact that we need to take a closer look at Product X and see if there are areas of waste and inefficiency creeping in. Could we make Product X in larger batches? Is there any mileage to doing that? Because that might well, um, you know, level things up a little bit. So, um, yeah, cost drivers and pools are expensive to set up and maintain, so there is a potential downside um, for that. Um, I've put a link to the uh, paper and the mark scheme in the notes, so if you wanted to have a little read through, um, it's, it's not very lengthy, then you can have a little look at that. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I shall be posting some more videos soon, so uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you should get a notification when some new material is uploaded. Thanks very much for watching.